Okay, so we're going to now have a look at how to use inverse normal calculations. So this is where we know the probability of something happening, but we don't know the value that gives us that probability. You also need to be able to use your calculator to work back from a probability to a starting value. We can tell which way our tail goes and by this i mean if i go into the function where we do this which is in distribution again normal and then this time inver inverna inverse normal you can see that again it might look like this to begin with just make sure that you click variable so it changes to this and you can see here that we've got tail okay um, now, the tail is determined by the direction of the inequality symbol. So you could, if you wanted to, sketch what your uh, normal hypothesis, normal distribution, sorry, uh, looks like. So if we had, oops, sorry, that's not very bell shaped. Sorry, <laughs> imagine that's a bell shape. Uh, if we had, let's say, a mean of 10 and we were asked to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 9, you could easily draw 9 on to your diagram. Less than or equal to 9 means that we colour in this side here. And similarly, if we had probability of x being greater than or equal to 12, we'd have 12 over here. And then we'd have greater than or equal to 12 being there. Um, so in this case here, for the red one, which is our probability of x being less than or equal to 9, that tail is in the direction of right. If you struggle with drawing the diagram or thinking of the direction of the tail, if you have a look at the inequality symbol that we actually use, so this one points that way if you think of it as like an arrowhead even if it's just a strict inequality like this because remember there's no difference between the meaning of the, those two um but if we have a look here we can see that if it was an arrowhead if i just draw the rest of the arrowhead on there it's like it's pointing to the left and we've covered colored in here the left hand side of this line here Similarly, with this one here, if you think of these symbols, if we were to make those into arrowheads, they're pointing to the right. And we have coloured in the right-hand side of this line here. So we can see, uh, we can use that to help us to determine which way the tail is, or you could draw it. It's up to you. Uh, so... The wingspans of a population of birds is normally distributed with a mean of 14.1 and a standard deviation of 1.7. So I'm just going to write our distribution down. So we're going to have x squiggle n, 14.1. And then remember that it's actually the variance that goes into here. So we have to put 1.7 squared. So then we're finding which wingspan, sorry, we're trying to find the wingspan for which 90% of the population have smaller wings. So that means that we're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to some value, we'll just call it a, is 90%. If we think about what that looks like on a diagram, if we have our normal distribution curve, we have a mean of 14.1. We're wanting 90% to be less than a line. Now, because, as we said previously in uh, the finding probabilities section, uh, half of this diagram, the mean is in the middle, half of it is going to be 50% this way and 50% this way. I'm wanting 90% to be smaller than something, so it's going to end up being like this, where this area here is 0 0.9, and this is some value here. So you can write it, make sure that you do end up writing it like I have done here, but if you're wanting to try and visualise it using the normal distribution curve, you can do. So then in our calculator, 
where it says tail, where you can think here, I've coloured in the left side of the line, or if this was an arrowhead, it'd be pointing to the left. So our tail is going left. The area is the probability, because remember, as we talked about before again, that uh, when we're finding probabilities using the normal distribution, we're finding the area of the curve. So that's what this is talking about. The probability is the area, so 0.9. The standard deviation is 1.7 and the mean is 14.1. So that gives us that A must be 16.3. And we can do a little bit of a logic check. Would it make sense for 16.3 to be over here? Well, yes, because it's more than 14.1, so it does make sense. Uh, and we can even add units onto that. Uh, these are in centimetres, so that value there would also be in centimetres. So then, sorry, it does go over onto the next page. So then we've got the wingspan, of which 20% of the population have larger wings. So remember that we've got our X squiggle n x is normally distributed with a mean of 14.1 and a standard deviation of 17 so we've got a variance of 1 point, no, 17 sorry 1.7 so we've got a variance of 1.7 squared now this time we're trying to find the wingspan for which 20 percent of the population has larger wings so that's going to be probability of x being greater than or equal to some value is 0.2 uh, however uh, if you wanted to draw it again, this time we'd have our 14.1 here, some value there that means that this value, this area here is not 0.2. So if you want to, you can draw it to get used to how it's going to look on the normal distribution curve. Uh, so then the tail this time is going to the right. We've coloured in the right-hand side of this line here, uh, but also this points to the right. So right... The area is not 0.2 this time. Standard deviation is still 1.7 and the mean 14.1. And we end up with A equals 15.5. And then we've got the limits of the central 95% of wingspans. So this time... We're looking for the probability, and this is a bit hard to write down using the probability notation, because actually what we're looking at is the mean minus a value is less than x, is less than the mean plus the same value is 0.95. And if we think about what that looks like on a diagram, what we're saying is that if we have 14.1, because we're saying that this is the central uh, 95%, we're meaning in the middle, we have 95% of our data. Which means that because it's symmetrical, we're going to have the same amount on each side of our mean line. Meaning that this is going to be 14.1 minus a number. And this is going to be 14.1 plus a number. Now, just be careful this time because it's not we're going to end up with what these numbers are, not what A is. So just be careful with that as well. So we're going to have the tail is now central because we're looking at the central part. Our area is 0.95. Uh, the standard deviation is still 1.7 and the mean is 14.1. And that gives us... 10.8, which is going to be less than x, which is going to be less than 17.4. So I'd now like you to pause the video and I want you to give the now you try questions a go. Remember, they do start back over onto the previous page. Give the now you try questions a go. Okay, so hopefully you've given the now you try uh, a go. Uh, so for the first one, we should be getting 11.9. And if we have a look at what that diagram would look like, if this was our normal distribution curve, 
got 14.1 we were wanting 10 percent to be less than some value and that value is ending up being 11.9 and yes it does make sense because 11.9 is less than 14.1 then the next part we've got five percent is more than a number so again here we've got our 14.1 we're wanting five percent to be bigger than that number which gives us 16.9 and then central 90 percent here we want this bit in the middle to be 90 percent and we've got 14.1 still in the middle now if you notice these two answers here contain the same value because if you think about what's happening here if we have 90 percent in the middle then the remaining 10 percent is going to be split between either end of the normal distribution curve which means that we're going to have five percent below and we're going to have five percent above oops sorry five percent above and that means that this bit here is the exact same as this bit here because we were having the same mean and standard deviation. So I think that's quite an interesting thing to see there. Okay, so just another example, trying it with different mean and standard deviation this time. So we've got uh, a large shoal of fish have lengths which are normally distributed with a mean of 74 and a standard deviation of nine. And you can see straight away, I write down my distribution. The lengths that will be exceeded by 10%. Now, quite a lot of pupils do struggle with the words exceeded. So what this is meaning is that we have 10% that is bigger than some number. So if we were to draw the diagram, that's going to be 0 0.1 there. So looking at the probability that x is bigger than some number is 0 0.1. So our tail is going to the right. Our area is 0 0.1. Standard deviation this time is 9. And the mean is 74. Which gives us 85.5 centimetres. Next, we've got the length that will be exceeded by 70% of the shoals. So again, we're wanting the 70% to be the uh, bigger than them. So this time, if we're wanting 70%, it's going to go past halfway because that's only 50%. So we want this area here to be 70%. And we're trying to find that value there. Or well, the probability that X is bigger than some number is 0.7. Uh, so then the tail is still going to the right, but now the area is 0.7, which gives us 60, oops, 69.3. Uh, then we've got the length that will be exceeded, sorry, the length that will exceed 95% of the shoal. Those bits are in the wrong place. Uh, the lengths that will exceed 95% of the shoal. So this time we're wanting it so that 95% of the data is less than this number. So again, if we were to start from the bottom this time, we're wanting it so that 95% of the data is on that side or the probability that X is less than some value is 0.95. So this time our tail is going to the left. Our area is not point oops, sorry. Our area is not point nine five. Uh, and that gives us uh eighty-eight point eight. And then we've got the Limits of the central 60%. So as we were talking about before, that means that we've got R74 and we've got exactly six. Sorry, that's very wonky. Got 60% in the middle there. Oops. 
So that's going to be 66.4 is less than x is less than 81.6. So I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try a go. So hopefully you've paused the video and you've given the now you try a go. Uh, so for the first one, exceeded by 5%, that means 5% is bigger, so the probability of x being more than a is 0.05, or if you drew it on the diagram, it'd be this bit at the end that's coloured in, that's 0.05 there, that's our 74, which gives us 88.8. Uh, then we've got exceeded by 25%, so very similarly, again, 74, some value there, which means that this area here is 0.25, uh, and that value ends up being 80.1. Then we've got x being less than a is a half. Well, as we talked about before, the mean is halfway uh through our probability, remember that the area is going to add up to one underneath the curve. Uh, so that means that if it's half that we're looking for being less than something or even more than something, we are going to end up with the mean because that is halfway through our data. And then we're looking at the central 10%, which would be a very small slither in the middle where this area here is 10% which gives us 72.9 to 75.1. So just some interesting, uh, another interesting thing to point out, these two here would fit together and that's why we end up with the same value because we've got the same mean and standard deviation. If we say 95% is less than it or exceeded by, uh, sorry, uh, exceed 95% of the data, and then exceeded by 5% of the data, we end up with the same value as you can see here. Now there is another special uh, distribution, which is linked to the normal distribution, and we are going to be using that a little bit in our next section, which is finding the mean or standard deviation, giving information about a distribution. Uh, which is called the standard normal distribution. And I just want you to make aware of it. Uh, usually the symbol that we use for the standard normal distribution is Z instead of X. So we'd say Z follows the normal distribution and it's where we've got the mean of zero and we've got a standard deviation of one. So we are going to be talking about this a little bit later on, but we can do all of these things that we've already just done here using this distribution. It's just whenever they talk about the standard normal distribution, just know it means that we have a mean of zero and a standard deviation as one. Well. But we are going to have a look at this a little bit more in finding the mean and or standard deviation. Thank you very much for listening.